Hello, 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 and welcome to Pints with Aquinas. Matt Frad here. Hope you're doing well. I had an amazing weekend. My family and I went to Cleveland for the life profession of Sister Natalia, who is now Mother Natalia. You'll remember we had Sister Natalia on the show uh, just a couple of, well, weeks ago. I've got a link in the description below. If you didn't get to listen to that interview, you might want to consider doing it. It was right before her life profession, so we spoke about it in great detail. And I had a lot of people say that it was probably the best interview that we've done on the show. Um, And not only because she called me a pansy within the first five minutes for shaving my beard and going to a Roman Catholic church. That wasn't the only reason it was great. It was it was great for other reasons. So anyway, we went there and it was absolutely amazing. I uh, my family and I went the night before we prayed Vespers with the sisters and it was so beautiful. I just love them. I got a link in the description below also to the Facebook page of Christ the Bridegroom Monastery, of which she is a part, if you want to watch the full video, okay? So be sure to check that out. Um, yeah, so we went to Vespers, and then we sat down, and me and sister, Father Michael O'Loughlin, <laughs> smoked cigars, drank whiskey, talked about the beauty of God's providence. Man, it was it was so fantastic. So I think I've told you this, right, that, that well, Sister Natalia said this in our interview, that sh- when she joins the monastery, she can, can't cut her hair until the life profession. And so her hair was past her bottom, and uh, it got cut on that day. And I'm going to show you a video of that before we wrap up today. Um, and I think you're going to find it really beautiful. Let me just show you a couple of images, right? So as I say, like, this is Sister Natalia here, right? Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Um This was her when she entered the church, and she makes three prostrations before uh, reaching reaching the bishop. It was amazing. I, uh, you know, we all knew that she was going to come out, um, and I I walked up the back where my family was sitting, and I caught a glimpse of her in the uh, in the narthex, and it cut me to the heart. I just I was so moved by it. I'm used to seeing Sister Natalia in her beautiful black habit, but it was her and Sister Petra who was also making her life profession. And um, yeah, they were they were both dressed in white with their hair down. And I, I it, it cut me to the heart. I I was just, my breath was taken away. I just looked at her and I went, oh. <laughs> um, it reminded me of seeing my bride standing at the entrance of the church as she she processed down. Uh, she she's she's so beautiful. I was just I was in tears. It, it was absolutely marvelous. Uh, what else can I show you? Well, I'll show you this first. This was an image of me hugging her <laughs> at the end of, of the uh, you know the thing in the jig. Um, it was a three and a half hour liturgy with four children. Let me tell you something. When Byzantines say, let us conclude, whatever, they're lying to you. They're not ready to conclude. They've still got an hour left. So it was interesting to see all the Roman Catholic priests and Roman Catholics just like, oh, try not to fall over, you know, needing a session with a chiropractor after it was done. And all the Byzantines were just awesome and didn't flinch or move at all. But afterwards, we all walked up to the new mother's and we said to her, what is your name, mother? And then she would say, my name is Mother Natalia. And then I said, may you join the angelic ranks or the ranks of the... I, I forget exactly. Um, forgive me. You can school me in the comment section if you're a Byzantine Catholic. Just absolutely outraged at my poor commentary on this wonderful life profession. But it was so good. It was so good. So I want to I want to show you this video now of... And it's really... Okay, so here's what happens, okay? So... The bishop says to Sister Natalia, um, he's about to cut her hair, right? So she, he says, give me the scissors. And he, she gives him the scissors and he throws them away from her and she's got to walk after them and get them. And she comes back and he throws them away again. And he says, give me the scissors. And so the third time he throws them away. And then uh, she finally, it's, I think it's the way of the bishop testing her. Like, are you really ready to make this commitment? So I'm going to play that video for you now. And as I play it, I'm going to read from the actual, um, from the bulletin or the program, what was going on. And just so you know, my my beautiful daughter, Kiara, took this video. So I apologize if it's a little shaky. I think she did a great job, but here it is. Look at that hair. So he throws the scissors, right? So he says, 
take up the scissors and give them to me. Each time the candidate, Mother Natalia, Sister Natalia at the time, takes the scissors and gives them to the bishop, kissing his right hand. And each time the bishop throws the scissors down the center of the church. Uh, the candidate receives the scissors and gives them to the bishop, who replaces the scissors on the book of the Gospels. It was. It kind of got comical, I think, especially for us Western Catholics. We're like, this seems a bit weird, right? But the symbolism is so profound. I got to tell you something else soon that, that that took place. All right, so then the bishop says, From the hand of Christ you receive these scissors. It is before Christ that you stand. It is to Christ that you make your profession. It is for Christ that you renounce all. Then taking up the scissors from the book of the Gospels, the bishop says, Blessed is God who wills that all people should be saved and come to the knowledge of the truth. Blessed is he now and forever and ever. All right, so now what happens here is the bishop then tonches the top of Sister Natalia's head in the sign of the cross. So he cuts a bit of her hair off and he says, Our sister, Mother Natalia, is tonsured in the hair of her head as a sign that she has renounced the world and everything that is in the world and for the restraining of her will and of all fleshly desires. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Let us all say for her, Lord, have mercy. Alright. How many times do we say, Lord, have mercy in the liturgy? About seven million times. Which is appropriate for me, since I'm a great sinner. Alright, the bishop touches with his right hand the something that I can't pronounce, with which the beginner is clothed and holding it says, Our sister, let's see here, we, how are we doing? Our sister, Mother Natalia, receives this, it's this beautiful thing she wears under her, um, her monastic clothing. The betrothal of the angelic schema as a perpetual reminder of taking upon herself the easy yoke of Christ and of bearing his light burden and for the curbing and restraining of all her carnal desires. And she takes also the sign of the Lord's cross upon her breast for a perpetual reminder of the suffering and humiliation, spitting, revilement, wounds, buffeting, crucifixion, death of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he voluntarily endured for our sakes and to signify that as far as possible, she will endeavor to imitate this in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. <laughs> Sorry about that. That's my uh, nine-year-old daughter's filming. Which again, I think she did a great job. All right. So there you go. There's, there's, just, some, there's just some of it. Um, yeah. Yeah. And then her hair has been cut and, and, and the mother who was holding her hair looked back and she was like, it's heavy. <laughs> anyway, glory to Jesus Christ. And I just want to kind of share something that I got from this and then I'll wrap up. You know, by the way, I've put again, the, the program is in the link below. So click it and scan through the, the, the program. One of the most beautiful things in the program was a beautiful note that Mother Natalia wrote to everyone watching. And the basic gist of it said, you know, maybe you're here today and you're seeing myself and Sister Petra giving our life to God um, to be monastics forever. And you're thinking, look how beautiful this person is. Look how holy she is. And she said, but you're, that's not at all what's happening. Like what's happening is I am a great sinner in need of repentance in order to save my soul. And that is why I'm joining the monastery, right? So it's an act of perpetual repentance. And as I was watching that, I thought of my own vocation in marriage and how I think the way in which the world tells us marriage ought to be has infected the way we view marriage, whether we know it or not. And I went to confession recently and I got kicked in the stomach by this priest. Not literally, but it was amazing. So here's what happened. My wife's been very sick lately. She's made that public, which is why I don't mind sharing it with you. And I just wasn't doing well. 
I wasn't loving her. I wasn't being patient with her. I was kind of being a jerk. Not kind of, I was being a jerk. I was impatient with her. I was frustrated with her. There's just more stress on the family and just, yeah, just not wanting to pick up the cross, not wanting to love her, not wanting to to take, you know, pick up the slack. All right. And so I go to confession and I say this and, 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 and the priest says to me, when, a, when we, when, when a couple gets married, they project as to what their marriage will look like, what things will be like, you know? And, and what does that mean? Yeah, so you've got beautiful kids and, you know, you've got a house and you grow old together, you pray together, you're on vacation, vacation together. You have all these ideas of how it'll look, you know, you might look at a beautiful love life and these sorts of things. Um, but he said this to me, and, and this gets back to this beautiful, beautiful um, um, life profession. He says, at the heart of every sacrament is the cross. And then he said to me regarding my wife's sickness, he said, so in a sense, nothing is going wrong. This is exactly how it ought to be. And you saw, this is what he said, you signed on the dotted line, buddy. And you said, you know, in sickness and when times are bad, well, guess what? She's sick now and times are bad. <laughs> it's like, he was like, suck it up. And he didn't say suck it up, but it was so powerful. And I just think we have to start thinking of marriage as how, here's how I'm going to become a saint. I'm going to renounce the world and I'm going to sacrifice for my wife and I'm going to con- be in continual repentance, right? So anyway, it was really beautiful. Um, and I just thought it would be neat if we incorporated a lot of the imagery and wording of that life profession into the marriage ceremony because when you come, you come to die, right? Husbands, love your brides as Christ loved the church. And he loved the church by giving himself up for her. And I think it's just so easy for me and for other men to say something that sounds heroic, right? We say something like, I'd die for my bride. And maybe you would, and that's fantastic. But you know what's more difficult, I think, than dying for your bride, like getting a bullet in the head, is every day loving her, uh, anticipating her needs, being gentle with her, being patient with her, sacrificing for her. That stuff is hard. Um, so I think en- enough of the big talk, like, oh, I'd lay down my life for her. You know, great. That, um, that's awesome. If, but I mean, the chances that'll happen are pretty slim. So how about you, Matt Frad, stop being a, a little whiny baby and, and, and love your bride, man. So that's, I got a lot from that. And, and I hope you can apply that to your own life as well. Uh, God bless you. Uh, please click the links in the description below. We've got two there. One is to the program, okay? Uh, so you can read it for yourself. It was beautiful. The other is to the Christ the Bridegroom Monastery Facebook page, and you can actually watch if you can if you can stand it three the three and a half hour liturgy, and it was actually beautifully shot, and so you might enjoy it even to scroll through a little bit, see different elements of it. Um, may may God bless Mother Natalia. Oh, here's here's one thing I, I wanted to say too. After here, I'm gonna sh- well, I'll, I'll just tell you. After the life profession, guess what the sisters do, the, the new mothers do? They spend five days in the chapel. This is their honeymoon with their beloved. They sleep in the chapel. Their food is brought to them in the chapel. They each spend five days in the chapel, reading spiritual works, praying. Oh, glory to Jesus Christ. My wife is actually on her way to Cleveland uh, today, and she'll be spending the night at the monastery as well. And she's brought uh, Mother Natalia a few gifts. So glory to Jesus Christ. Uh, May God bless you, friends. Please pray for Mother Natalia. Uh, Have I showed you all the images yet? I think I have. Let's see. Yeah, that's when she went down in repentance. Okay. What else? There she is, the beautiful woman. And again, if you didn't watch my interview with then Sister Natalia, now Mother Natalia, the link is also in the description. It's about two and a half hours, but it's definitely worth your time. It's obviously all of these long podcasts I do are also on iTunes and Spotify and wherever else you get your podcasts if you'd rather listen to it. God bless you, my friends. Glory to Jesus Christ. And now you say glory forever. Ready? Let's do it again. Glory to Jesus Christ.